Welcome to Exploring Arizona Life Science Research and Biodiversity with the Tree of Life Web Project. This episode features students in Sally Dover's fifth grade classroom at Santa Cruz School in Tucson, Arizona, interviewing Kim Franklin, a PhD student in the Interdisciplinary Program in Insect Science at the University of Arizona. In this first segment of discussion with Kim, the focus is on ants. Visit podcasts at towweb.org for learning materials to accompany this episode and to find out how to contribute to the series. Contact me, Lisa Schwartz, at learning at towweb.org with questions and comments. Thank you for coming today. We are so excited to interview you. We did some research on all kinds of insects and we learned really cool things. We want to ask some of these things we've been wondering about. What do you like most about your job? What I like about my job is that I get to go to different places, exotic places, to collect different types of insects. So I get, last year at this time I was in Madagascar. Mm -hmm. It's an island that has this incredible diversity of animals and plants and I was there collecting all sorts of, of exotic ants. and. This past year I was working in Mexico collecting ants, so the best part of my job is that I get to go to all these different places to collect insects. What is your favorite bug and why? My favorite bug are the ants called honeypot ants. I don't know if you have heard of them. They, they live here in the Sonoran Desert, and what they do is the, the ants are out foraging, they're out looking for food, and they bring back food and there's these ants that live underground all the time. They never leave the nest and they hang from the ceiling and the other ants that are going out looking for food feed them and their, their abdomens swell up full of honey. So they all the food in their abdomens until their abdomens are big and full of honey. And then when they're, during the winter when there's no food, the other ants eat the honey from their abdomens. They're called <laughs> honey pot ants. And, um, People actually eat them too. They'll dig them up and they're very sweet and delicious and use them in desserts. So those are my favorite. Can some ants have diseases? Ants can have diseases, but, but it's very rare that they get diseases because they have this special organ that produces antibiotics and antifungals. So that because ants live under the ground, they're, they're exposed to a lot of bacteria and dirt and germs but they have this special gland that produces antibiotics and they um, rarely, if ever, get sick from the bacteria and fungus that are in the ground. Why do ants live in large groups? There's a lot of benefits to living in a big group. They form these big groups and then some ants have a, a particular job to go out and look for food. And other ants are in, under the ground taking care of the, the baby ants, the larvae and other ants are taking care of the queen ant that lives under the ground. And other ants are specially designed to protect the, the colony from predators. So if you live together in a group, then everyone can have a specific job and, and life becomes much more easy for you. Sort of like humans live in groups and societies and everyone has different jobs and everything works well that way. If we had the strength of an ant, what would we be able to do? Well, an ant can lift five times its body weight. So if you had this, that kind of strength, you could lift you and probably four or five other students here in the classroom. You could lift all of them at one time and carry them back to your house. So <laughs> if we had that kind of strength. Are ants poisonous and can they kill you? Um, some ants have a poison, we call it a venom, and some ants don't. So some ants have a stinger, and just like bees do, they sting you. And then when they do that, they inject a poison. And almost, almost always it's not a very strong poison. So it, it, it'll hurt a little bit, but, but not very bad. But sometimes, some people are um, allergic to bee stings and ant stings, and so they could have a very strong reaction to a, a poison. And, and if they don't get to a doctor who can give them a medicine, it's possible they could die. But it's extremely unlikely, extremely unlikely. Why do ants' bites hurt? Because the, that venom, well, the, the ants aren't biting you with their, with their jaws. 
they're stinging you with their stinger. And they put a venom inside you. And that venom stimulates your, your pain cells that you have in your skin. So the same thing when you get burned or something, you have these pain receptors. And that, um, the venom does the same thing that, say, when you, that they, the sensation is pain and your brain tells you, oh, you've got a ant sting. Have you ever seen a queen ant? I have seen queen ants. As entomologists, we sometimes we dig up the colonies and we look for the queens. And if we find the queen, we can take her back to the laboratory and give her a home. And then we can study the colony. We can watch her make eggs and workers and see how they do different things in the colony. How big is a queen ant? And can it, and can it get any bigger? A lot bigger than the worker ants that you guys see out on the ground. And um, queen ants can get very big. Their abdomens, say, so there's a group of ants called army ants. And their queens have 100,000 eggs in their abdomens. So their abdomens are huge. They get big and swollen and they're full of eggs. And then after they have all their eggs, they lay all their eggs and their abdomens shrink down again, become small. But they can get very big. Can you tell us one more really cool thing about insects before you go? An example in here, it's called Odontomachus, and it has big long jaws, very long and very powerful jaws, and it can move them very fast. It's the fastest movement in the animal kingdom. No animal has been recorded moving a body part faster than this. And when it closes its jaws, and the jaws hit a hard surface, it's so... the force is so powerful that the, in, the ant is propelled into the air. So it can, it can do this to escape predators. So a bird is coming to get it or a lizard or something and then it can close its jaws and it bounces up into the air and it lands just fine over there and escapes. Is it, is it faster than us? Much, much, much faster than us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's incredible.